Want to speak real Hungarian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at HungarianPod101.com. Immersion is often hailed as the most efficient and effective way to learn a foreign language. In many ways, it's true. With all the language learning methods out there, nothing else comes close to having to think and interact with your environment in the language you're learning. Unfortunately, though, most language learners wrongly assume that the only way to experience language immersion is to pack up and move to a foreign country. But not everyone can afford to spend a summer abroad just to learn a foreign language. Luckily, there are other ways to immerse yourself. These methods are less obvious, but they are effective. In this video, we'll take a look at five steps you can take for the ultimate language immersion experience at home. Number one, transform your digital world into your target language. Technology is an indispensable part of modern life. We interact with phones, computers, tablets, and other electronic devices throughout the day. Why not take these interactions and use them to practice your target language? Most devices give you the option of switching the language of the operating system. Switching your phone or laptop interface to your target language won't make you fluent, but it will help you engage with the language in a very practical way, multiple times every day. Another way to transform your digital life is to check which sites you use on a daily basis and use them in your target language also. A great example of this is switching your version of Google. Using Google in your target language will allow you to search for things in that language and you're more likely to get results in that language as well. So if you're looking for a popular band, a show, or food, something that's usually written in your target language, it will actually be easier to find information about it if you switch your version of Google. Of course, you can also change popular social networks like Facebook or Twitter. You can even go to news sites for your fill of global news. Do you like podcasts? Try listening to a couple popular podcasts in your target language. Number two, write out a speech or conversation in your target language. A surefire way to increase your ability in a foreign language is to write out a mock conversation or speech in that language. Pretend you have to give a speech on one of your favorite topics. It could be anything from sports, hobbies, or even your favorite movie genre. Now, take some time to write out your fictitious speech. Inevitably, you will hit some roadblocks, but when you get stuck, research the words or grammar points you don't know. This is a highly effective and practical way to increase your vocabulary, and it'll help you practice thinking in a different language. Writing a long, connected train of thoughts exposes the gaps and weaknesses in your language studying. Once you know what these are, you're free to practice them and use them to continue on with your speech. This is also a great way to learn new words in the context of your entire speech. Context is king when you're learning a language. Learning words in the context of other words and sentences helps you surmise what new words mean. It also helps you get comfortable with how these words are practically used. Not to mention, context helps you to remember and recall new information more easily. Number three, practice with native speakers. There are a lot of great learning resources out there for anyone learning a new language. However, nothing quite comes close to practicing the language with a real person. If you live in or around a large metropolitan area, there's a chance that there are some native speakers nearby. Check and see if your area has any local language exchanges or language speaking groups. You're likely to find a native speaker there. If you can't make a connection locally, you can search online. Just as there are language exchanges in the real world, there are also online ones, most of which are free. Number four, connect with other language learners. Native speakers aren't the only people who can aid you on your language learning journey. Practicing with other learners is also helpful. Don't worry if you practice with someone who has a higher or lower level in the language than you. If you're the more advanced learner, you can learn a lot by teaching someone else. As you help someone else understand difficult words or grammatical concepts, you'll find that you start to better understand them yourself. If your learning partner has a higher level, they can be the one to help you overcome the hurdles you encounter as a beginner. After all, what better way to learn than from someone who, as a language learner, has been in your shoes? Number five, reward yourself in your target language. At the end of a busy day, we all love a little relaxation and me time. One of the most enjoyable and effective ways to develop your language skills is to kick back and enjoy the language while doing leisure activities. Whether it's listening to music, watching a movie or TV show, reading a book, or even enjoying a good online video binge, 
Even spending just an extra 30 minutes a day doing something you love in your target language can yield some serious long-term results. If you're a beginner, start with more basic content. You might have to start out listening to simple songs or even watching children's shows. After a while, though, you'll be able to dive into the meatier stuff and more engaging stuff as your proficiency increases. Learning a foreign language doesn't mean you have to spend your days straining over grammar rules or textbooks. Any way that you can take your learning off the page and make it more enjoyable will help you learn faster. Immersion is a powerful way to learn a foreign language. And now, more than ever, the immersion experience isn't limited to just world travelers. With a little creativity and the right resources, you can experience the language without ever having to leave your hometown. Many of these resources can be found with our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to immerse yourself in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Want to speak real Hungarian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at HungarianPod101.com. 10 Phrases to Amaze Native Speakers Köszönöm, de igazság szerint nem ez az anyanyelvem. Thank you, but I'm not a native speaker actually. Köszönöm, de igazság szerint nem ez az anyanyelvem. Thank you, but I'm not a native speaker actually. If you are super fluent in the language and then people comment or even think that you are from that country and then you say that, then people are going to be really surprised. Mindössze egy évbe telt, hogy megtanuljak folyékonyan beszélni. It took me only one year to become fluent. Mindössze egy évbe telt, hogy megtanuljak folyékonyan beszélni. It took me only one year to become fluent. When people ask you how long have you been studying a language and then you say it took you just a year to become fluent, then it's definitely impressive. Három éven belül anyanyelvi szinten fogok magyarul beszélni. I'll speak Hungarian like a native speaker in three years. Három éven belül anyanyelvi szinten fogok magyarul beszélni. I'll speak Hungarian like a native speaker in three years. Please challenge yourself and let us know if it worked out. I'm really curious how long it took for our viewers to get in, not only into native level, but like just conversational level. Try it. Tíz éve tanulok magyarul. I've been learning Hungarian for 10 years. Tíz éve tanulok magyarul. I've been learning Hungarian for 10 years. How about you? How long have you been studying Hungarian? Please let us know in the comment section. Magyar filmeket felirat nélkül is tudok nézni. I can watch Hungarian movies without subtitles. Magyar filmeket felirat nélkül is tudok nézni. I can watch Hungarian movies without subtitles. To be able to watch Hungarian movies without subtitles, I think you have to be pretty much on a native speaker level. Depends on the movie too, but on sometimes you hear slangs or regional uh, language, then that could be a little bit difficult to understand. I think it's a good challenge to try how fluent you are to watch a movie without the subtitles and then, for example, have a discussion with your friends about the movie afterwards. That could be a really good practice. Meg tudok jegyezni 50 magyar szót egy nap alatt. I can memorize 50 Hungarian words a day. Meg tudok jegyezni 50 magyar szót egy nap alatt. I can memorize 50 Hungarian words a day. Memorizing 50 words a day is pretty impressive. I think I've never tried that much. A magyar nyelv szórakoztató és könnyen tanulható. Hungarian is fun and easy to learn. A magyar nyelv szórakoztató és könnyen tanulható. Hungarian is fun and easy to learn. That's right. 
Hungarian language is very interesting, I think. We have a lot of sounds, various ways how we can talk about something or even say a word. Because of that, our literature is pretty uh, rich as well. If you are looking for a fun language, which is not really widespread yet, <laughs> then please try out Hungarian. A magyar nyelven kívül egyéb nyelveken is beszélek. Apart from knowing Hungarian, I can speak a few other languages as well. A magyar nyelven kívül egyéb nyelveken is beszélek. Apart from knowing Hungarian, I can speak a few other languages as well. I speak Hungarian, English and Japanese fluently. How about you? How many languages do you speak? Magamtól tanulok magyarul. I'm learning Hungarian all by myself. Magamtól tanulok magyarul. I'm learning Hungarian all by myself. That's very impressive, I think, if people ask you, how do you study Hungarian? And if you say, oh, it's all by myself because I'm interested, then they'll be both happy and impressed. I wonder if there are any sources in your country to study Hungarian or are you going to uh, language school or do you take lessons from a teacher or are you just studying on your own? I'm very interested, so please let us know in the comment section. Gyakran beszélek magyarul álmomban. I often speak in Hungarian in my dream. Gyakran beszélek magyarul álmomban. I often speak in Hungarian in my dream. That's a very interesting thing that if you get to that level that you start to think and even dream in a foreign language, then probably you're really good at it. Sziasztok! Livia vagyok. Hi, I'm Livia. Nice to meet you. In this series, we are going to learn basic Hungarian expressions. It's super easy and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Hungarian. There are only two sentences you need to do it, but first, it is important to clarify that in Hungarian there's a difference between the formal and the informal language. Let's first see how Hungarian people introduce themselves in an informal situation. Szia, Livia vagyok. Örvendek. Hi, I'm Livia. Nice to meet you. Szia, Livia vagyok. Örvendek. Start by saying Szia. Then say your name and then Vagyok. Szia, Livia vagyok. Finally say Örvendek. Szia, Livia vagyok. Örvendek. And now let's see the same sentence in formal speech. Jó napot kívánok, Szöllősi Lívia vagyok. Örvendek. Good day, I'm Lívia Szöllősi. Nice to meet you. Jó napot kívánok, Szöllősi Lívia vagyok. Örvendek. So, what has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a close look at these together. Szia has been substituted with the formal greeting Jó napot kívánok. Hungarian for good day. Livia vagyok has not been changed. Vagyok stands in both cases for I am. However, during the formal self-introduction, we also say our last name, so I said Szöllősi Livia. Here, you would say your full name. Note that for Hungarian people, family names come first, followed by the given name. However, you don't have to reverse your name when introducing yourself. You can say Örvendek in both situations. One more time. The informal way to introduce yourself in Hungarian is Szia, Lívia vagyok, örvendek. The formal way to introduce yourself is Jó napot kívánok, Szöllősi Lívia vagyok, örvendek. And now it's time for Lívia's tips. When you introduce yourself, it's a good habit to shake hands. Jó napot kívánok is a very formal expression. Sometimes people just say Jó napot, when greeting each other. Both are polite, so you don't have to worry about making a mistake. In the last lesson, we learned how to introduce ourselves in Hungarian. 
In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use good manners as we thank people. Készen álltok? Are you ready? Akkor kezdjük. So let's start. There are several ways to thank someone. Let's start with the easiest. It's just one word. Köszönöm. Köszönöm. Köszönöm means thank you. When saying thank you very much, you just need to add szépen. Köszönöm szépen. Köszönöm szépen. Köszönöm szépen is like saying thank you kindly. During the last lesson, we mentioned both the informal and the formal way of speaking Hungarian. Köszönöm is the more formal way to thank someone. If you want to be more casual, there's another phrase you should use. Köszi. Köszi. Köszi is an abbreviation of köszönöm, meaning thanks. You would use this phrase when talking to friends. How do you answer? It's easy. There are basically two different ways to do it. The first is nincs mit. Nincs mit. Nincs mit literally means nothing to thank for, but it is the equivalent of you are welcome. The other way to say you are welcome is the expression szívesen. Szívesen. Literally, this phrase means kindly, but it has become a common and polite way to respond to someone thanking you. So when someone says köszönöm to you, simply reply with nincs mit or szívesen. In the last lesson, we learned how to be grateful to people by saying köszönöm. In this lesson, we will learn some of the most common greetings used in Hungary. Készen álltok? Are you ready? Akkor kezdjük. So let's start. The most commonly used informal greeting is Szia. Szia. Szia means hi, hello or goodbye. We use it when we meet, but also when we leave. We should only use this greeting with friends or relatives. If there are more people present, you should use Sziasztok, which basically means hi guys. Now let's continue by discussing the formal way to greet people. Jó napot. Jó napot. Literally, jó napot means good day. In the morning, we say jó reggelt, which means good morning. Jó reggelt. During the evening, we say jó estét. Jó estét. Este is Hungarian for evening, but when saying good evening, you have to say estét. When saying goodbye in formal situations, Hungarian people use viszont látásra. Viszont látásra. Viszont látásra means goodbye. You can also use its shorter form, viszlát, which is less formal. You can say this to a shop assistant, for example. With your friends, you should use Sia when speaking to one person, or Sziasztok when there are more people present. Sia, Sziasztok. Now you can greet people in many different ways in Hungarian. Let's look at them all again. When meeting older people, or someone we don't know, Jó napot. When leaving in a formal situation, Viszont látásra. When leaving in an informal situation, viszlát or szia. It's easy, isn't it? Want to speak real Hungarian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at HungarianPod101.com. In this lesson, we are going to deal with the verb to be in Hungarian, van. We will also discuss how to talk about your nationality. When you meet a new person in Hungary, they might ask you, honnan jöttél? Which means, where do you come from? Honnan means from where. The verb to come is jön. Jöttél is the conjugated form, meaning you came. Altogether, it's honnan jöttél? Honnan jöttél? Answering this question is very easy. You just say your nationality and then vagyok, which means I am. This is the verb van, but in a conjugated form. For example, amerikai vagyok. Amerikai vagyok. Just replace amerikai with your own nationality. I am German is német vagyok. 
I am Italian is Olasz vagyok. I am Brazilian is Brazil vagyok. You can also say I come from using the verb in the question. Amerikából jöttem. I'm from America. To return the question, you can simply say és te, which is and you, in an informal way. If you want to be formal, instead of te, you have to use the formal pronoun ön. És ön? Now it's time for Levia's tips. Be careful, because in Hungarian, we don't write nationality names with a capital letter, like in English. In the last lesson, we learned how to talk about nationality. In this lesson, we are going to learn about the verb van, meaning to be. This is the second part of our series about this verb. Van is also used to talk about location, to say things like, I am in the street, or he is in the room, so it's very useful. When you want to know where something or someone is, you use the verb van in Hungarian. Don't forget that like all verbs, this too has to be conjugated for the subject and in present or past tense. Let's see the conjugation of the verb van in present tense. Vagyok. I am. Vagy. You are. Van. He, she or it is. Vagyunk. We are. Vagytok. You are. Vannak. They are. For example, when someone asks you on the phone, hol vagy? That means, where are you? In an informal way. Let's break it down. Hol means where. Vagy is the conjugated form of van, meaning you are. Altogether, it is hol vagy. Hol vagy. Answering this question is a bit tricky, but not too hard. You say the place where you are and add the suffix that means in that place. The verb vagyok comes last. The issue of which suffix to use is too complicated for this lesson, but you will use one of these five. For now, practice with the examples I give you and you can learn the exact rules a little later. For example, you can say utcán vagyok, which is I am in the street. Street is utca. Adding the suffix an makes it utcán. Utcán vagyok. Now, let's see a few other possible answers with I. I am at the office would be irodában vagyok. I am in a meeting would be tárgyaláson vagyok. I am in a store would be boltban vagyok. Another useful expression with the verb van is when you answer the phone. To introduce yourself, just say your name and then say vagyok. So when I pick up the phone, I often say Livia vagyok. It is really simple. You just say your name and add vagyok. This verb van changes a lot depending on the subject and its tense. Let's review the conjugation once again. Vagyok. I am. Vagy. You are. Van. He, she or it is. Vagyunk. We are. Vagytok. You are. Vannak. They are. Now it's time for Livia's tips. Using the verb van, you can ask this convenient question if you're on a train or in a car and want to know where exactly you are. You can just say, Elnézést, hol vagyunk? Excuse me, where are we? Elnézést, hol vagyunk? In the last two lessons, we learned the main usages of the verb van, which means to be in Hungarian. In this lesson, we are going to learn one more use of this verb to talk about your age. It's normal for young people in Hungary to ask each other's age. Of course, it might be risky to ask people over 25. In formal Hungarian, people usually ask you, Mikor született? When were you born? Mikor született? In informal Hungarian, however, people just say, How old are you? Which is, Hány éves vagy? Hány éves vagy? Now you have to answer with your age. You can use the verb vagyok just like when talking about the place you're at. Here are some examples. I am 18. 18 éves vagyok. I am 20. 20 éves vagyok. I am 25. 25 éves vagyok. I am 40. 40 éves vagyok. 
Can you see what's happening here? We start with a number. 10 is 18. We learned about numbers back in lessons 6 and 7. Next we say éves, meaning years old. And then we just add vagyok. 18 éves vagyok. With the answer, there is no difference between the formal and the informal form. You can use it in both situations. Sometimes Hungarian people won't ask your age directly, but instead will ask your birth year. You heard the formal version of this question already, but here is the informal version. Mikor születtél? Mikor születtél? This means, when were you born? You just have to answer using the two last digits of your birth year, plus the ban or ben suffix, indicating place and in this case, time. 89 ben means in 89. First you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Egy férfi és egy nő beszélget. Mit fognak csinálni először? Mit akarsz ma csinálni? El akarok menni, megnézni egy filmet. Oké, okay, én meg akarok nézni egy baseball meccset a tévében. És még vásárolni is akarok menni. A baseball meccs délután egykor kezdődik. Oké, okay. először nézzük meg a filmet, és aztán te meg tudod nézni a baseball meccset. Rendben, aztán este elmegyünk vásárolni. Mit fognak csinálni először? Egy férfi és egy nő beszélget. Mit fognak csinálni először? Mit akarsz ma csinálni? El akarok menni, megnézni egy filmet. Oké, okay, én meg akarok nézni egy baseball meccset a tévében. És még vásárolni is akarok menni. A baseball meccs délután egykor kezdődik. Oké, okay. először nézzük meg a filmet, és aztán te meg tudod nézni a baseball meccset. Rendben, aztán este elmegyünk vásárolni. Egy nő egy étteremben ebédel. Mit fog rendelni? Szeretne kávét vagy desszertet az étkezés után? Milyen desszertjeik vannak? Van pudingunk és almáspiténk. Hmm, tulajdonképpen csak egy kávét kérnék. Szeretne cukrot vagy tejet? Tejjel hozza, kérem. Mit fog rendelni? Egy nő egy étteremben ebédel. Mit fog rendelni? Szeretne kávét vagy desszertet az étkezés után? Milyen desszertjeik vannak? Van pudingunk és almáspiténk. Hmm, tulajdonképpen csak egy kávét kérnék. Szeretne cukrot vagy tejet? Tejjel hozza, kérem. Hi everyone, this is Top Words in Hungarian and we are going to see and learn top 25 Hungarian phrases. Szia! Hello! The first one is Szia, which means hello. Szia! But if I say it to all of the viewers, then I would say Sziasztok! And this is an informal way of greeting people. So please use it with someone who is the same age as you or younger than you. You can use it with uh, uh, people who are older than you or in more high position, just in case they allow you to use this informal way. They usually say that, yeah, you can you can greet me like this or you can call me like that and then it's a green light for saying Sia. If you address more than one person, you should say Sia Stok. So this is how you greet a group of people. Jó reggelt. Good morning. Jó reggelt. Good morning. This is what you say in the morning. 
It's usually used in Hungary from early morning until around 11 a.m. And it literally means good morning. Jó means good and reggel means morning. Jó napot. Good afternoon. Jó napot. Good afternoon. You use this after jó reggel, so from around um, 11 a.m. This also literally means good day. Jó means good and nap means day. Don't use it with uh, kids because it would sound a little bit weird. But yeah, in general, in general, you can use it with uh, strangers. Just greet them. Jó napot. Good afternoon. And yeah. Jó éjszakát. Good night. Jó éjszakát. Good night. This is what you say before going to sleep or when you part with someone in the evening and you want to meet again until the next day. So, Jó means good and éjszaka means night. So, Jó éjszakát means good night. Mi a neved? What's your name? Mi a neved? What's your name? Mi a neved is an informal way to ask someone's name. If you would like to be more formal, please use Mi a neve? Én vagyok. I'm Én Léna vagyok. I'm Léna. This is how you introduce yourself. So you have to use Én, which means I. I am, and then say your name, and then vagyok, which is to be in Hungarian. So, én Lena vagyok. I'm Lena. You know, you can use it either in a formal or an informal situation. Örvendek. Nice to meet you. Örvendek. Nice to meet you. You use örvendek. Nice to meet you in a more formal situation. When you just greet friends or friends of your friends, you don't necessarily need to say this, otherwise you will sound a little bit formal. But it's not totally wrong, it's just you wouldn't sound as friendly. Hogy vagy? How are you? Hogy vagy? How are you? This is an informal way to ask this question, and if you would like to be more formal, please use hogy van. So informal is hogy vagy, and then a more formal is hogy van. Köszönöm jól, és te? I'm fine, thanks. And you? Köszönöm jól, és te? I'm fine, thank you. And you? This is how you respond when someone asks you, how are you in Hungarian? Hogy vagy? So, let's see a situation. Hogy vagy? Köszönöm jól, és te? Kérem, please. Kérem, please. This can be used um, either at the beginning of the sentence or what you want to say or at the end. For example, kérem hozzon egy menüt. Please bring me a menu. Or you can use it as Ne tegye oda a táskáját, kérem. Don't put your bag there, please. Köszönöm. Thank you. Köszönöm. Thank you. This is a very common way to say thank you. There are different levels to say thank you. So you can add an extra word in front or at the end or both ways. So for instance, nagyon köszönöm means thank you very much. Szívesen, you're welcome. Szívesen, you're welcome. Can you say this after you hear someone saying thank you to you and you were happy to help out or, or give them something and then you just say szívesen. Igen, yes. Igen, yes. Szereted a macskákat? Do you like cats? Igen, yes. Nem, no. Nem, no. 
Szereted a pókokat? Do you like spiders? Nem. No. Oké. 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 This word comes from English. Probably it's easier for Hungarian speakers to pronounce it that way. So we just say a sound E at the end. So it sounds oké instead of oké. Elnézést. Excuse me. Elnézést. Excuse me. You can say it in different situations. You can say it when you are at the restaurant and you would like to call the waiter or you can say it in a store when you would like to catch the shop assistant attention or you can even say it if you bump into someone accidentally and you want to say, you know, excuse me. Um, yeah, it's pretty universal, so elnézést means excuse me. Bocsánat. I'm sorry. Bocsánat. I'm sorry. Um, when you say bocsánat, it's more like you mean it more. So please use it when you are sorry for something that you that you've done a mistake or you hurt somebody or um, you can use it as well when you're walking down the street and you step on someone's feet then you can say bocsánat as well. Mennyi az idő? What time is it? Mennyi az idő? What time is it? This is uh, neither formal or informal so you can ask it from anyone. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Just say mennyi az idő when you are asking for the time. Mere van a mosdó? Where is the restroom? Mere van a mosdó? Where is the restroom? This is a very, very useful phrase. So, mere van a mosdó? when you are looking for the restroom, obviously. So, um, yeah. If you're in a situation that you need to go, just pop this question out and you will know. Várj egy pillanatot. Wait a moment. Várj egy pillanatot. Wait a moment. Yeah, if you want to shorten it up, then you can just say várj or in a formal way, várjon. So even though um, this phrase, wait a moment, sounds a bit formal in English. Uh, actually, vári egy pillanatot is an informal way to say it in Hungarian because of the verb in it, to wait, vári. It's an informal way to ask somebody to wait. If you would like to say it in a more formal way or when you are at the store, uh, you have to use, or you will most um, likely to hear, várjon egy pillanatot. Ez mennyibe kerül? How much is this? Ez mennyibe kerül? How much is this? You can use this question at the store when you are not sure about the price and there is no price tag. Just ask the shop assistant. Ez mennyibe kerül? Segítség. Help. Segítség. Help. When someone attacks you or you're in a situation that you need help, that you're about to faint away or something, just scream, Segítség! And then someone will notice it and they will help you. Segítség! Nem tudom. I don't know. Nem tudom. I don't know. If you really don't I know. don't know. I don't know what to say. Nem tudom mit mondjak. <laughs> Később találkozunk. See you later. Később találkozunk. See you later. This is what I'm going to say at the end. Viszontlátásra. Goodbye. Viszontlátásra. Goodbye. Um, if you want to be less formal, you can say Vislát, 
but it's still in the formal group. If you want to say bye to your friends, just say hello or see ya. It works both ways, so it's pretty convenient. That's how you say bye to your friends or you say viszontlátásra or viszlát to someone that you don't know. And that's the end. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please check out our website hungarianpod101.com for more awesome content in Hungarian. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a like if you like the video. And tell us in the comment section which was your favorite phrase. Később találkozunk. Viszontlátásra! Sziasztok! Lívia vagyok! Hi everybody! I'm Lívia! Welcome to HungarianPod101.com's Magyar Nyelvleckék 3 percben. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Hungarian. In the last lesson, we learned how to be grateful to people by saying Köszönöm. In this lesson, we will learn some of the most common greetings used in Hungary. Készen álltok? Are you ready? Akkor kezdjük! So let's start! The most commonly used informal greeting is Szia! Szia! Szia means hi, hello or goodbye. We use it when we meet, but also when we leave. We should only use this greeting with friends or relatives. If there are more people present, you should use Sziasztok, which basically means hi guys. Now let's continue by discussing the formal way to greet people. Jó napot! Jó napot. Literally, jó napot means good day. In the morning, we say jó reggelt, which means good morning. Jó reggelt. During the evening, we say jó estét. Jó estét. Este is Hungarian for evening, but when saying good evening, you have to say estét. When saying goodbye, in formal situations, Hungarian people use viszont látásra. Viszont látásra. Viszont látásra means goodbye. You can also use its shorter form, viszlát, which is less formal. You can say this to a shop assistant, for example. With your friends, you should use szia when speaking to one person, or sziasztok when there are more people present. Szia! Sziasztok! Now you can greet people in many different ways in Hungarian. Let's look at them all again. When meeting older people or someone we don't know, jó napot! When leaving in a formal situation, viszontlátásra! When leaving in an informal situation, viszlát or szia! It's easy, isn't it? And now it's time for Livia's tips. In formal situations, Hungarian people commonly greet each other by shaking hands. Girls greet their friends, including guys, with a kiss on both cheeks. Girls, don't be afraid to try it with your Hungarian friends. During the next lesson, we learn the meaning of the phrase Beszélsz angolul? Do you already know it? I will be waiting to talk about it with you in our next Magyar Nyelv Let's Cake 3 Percben lesson. Sziasztok! To master a new language and understand everything as soon as you hear it, to read with just a quick glance and speak smoothly without thinking, you need to review. Here are our top five review tactics. Number one, listen to examples over and over again. By listening closely and often, you start to pick up the rhythm of a language, as well as correct pronunciation from a native speaker. Use our line-by-line -line feature that lets you both listen and read along. Use this tool to practice as much as possible. Number two, use our voice recording tool to master perfect pronunciation. Record yourself and compare it against the native speaker. If you sound different, then repeat after the native speaker until you're able to match them. Use our voice recording feature, which makes recording super easy. Number three, 
Master your recorded conversations. Record conversations and go over them again and again. Master entire conversations and repeat them line by line. Use any of the dialogues available for download on our website. These come with transcripts of the entire conversation. Number four, use mobile devices to reinforce previously learned conversations. Constant review is the best way to progress in your language studies. Download the recorded dialogue to your mobile device and incorporate it into your music playlist. Quick reviews throughout the day effectively reinforce what you've learned. Number five, read with line-by-line -line notes. Read along with a native speaker to really master pronunciation and natural intonation. You should start slow at first, then slowly increase your speed. Your pronunciation will become more natural. You will also see that your ability to understand fluent speakers will greatly increase. You'll be able to improve your communication skills using these five simple review techniques. Increase your understanding of your target language. And remember, if you're interested in getting all these review tools, sign up for your free lifetime account. No credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. And start reviewing more every day. Want to speak real Hungarian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at HungarianPod101.com. You probably already have language learning goals, but the real key to success is to make the right goals. In this video, I'll show you how, with five tips to stop wasting your time and start learning. Hi everyone, Alicia here. In this video, I'll teach you five tips to stop procrastinating and keep your motivation for learning a new language. Some of these are study methods, and some will be general ways that you can keep your study motivation up. While these tips are for studying a language, some of them are good for other things in your life too, such as new challenges or other types of goals. But before we start, don't forget to click the link in the description to get your bundle of PDF cheat sheets, including survival phrases, romantic lines, learning tips, absolutely free. Now, you probably already have some goals you're trying to achieve when it comes to your language learning progress. While achieving these goals is important, making sure you make the right goals is the real key to success. The very first tip is to set SMART goals. SMART is an acronym, meaning each letter in the word stands for another word. The earliest known reference to SMART goals was in an article written by George T. Doran for a 1981 issue of the Management Review Academic Journal. The acronym varies depending on its use, but each letter generally stands for some criterion that helps with effective goal setting. For our purposes, let's define SMART goals as follows. The S stands for specific. Your goals should target a specific area for improvement. Our natural tendency is to have a goal that's very general. If your goal isn't specific enough, you'll lack the focus and proper direction you need to achieve your goals. So S is for specific. M stands for measurable. Your goals should be quantifiable. They should be able to indicate progress in some way. You have to be able to track your progress, otherwise you won't know if you're getting any closer to your goal. As you see yourself getting closer and closer to your goal, your motivation will go up. So your goals need to be measurable. A stands for achievable. Your goals have to be achievable. Many people want to become fluent in their target language immediately. However, this goal is unrealistic. Your goals have to be achievable. If your goal is too challenging for your current level, it will only demotivate you when you aren't where you think you should be. Instead, think about what results can realistically be achieved given your level, your resources, and any constraints, such as time. So make sure that your goal is actually achievable. R stands for relevant. Your goals may be specific, they may be measurable, and they may be achievable, but are they actually relevant to what you want to achieve? Don't just do a lot of things. If you're focused on improving your speaking skills in your target language, make sure that you spend your time having conversations with others. Make sure you're doing the right things so that your efforts actually bring you closer to your goal instead of just giving you more work. 
T stands for timely. You need to set a deadline for your goals. If you don't specify when you plan to achieve the result you've set for yourself, it's very easy to put off the task. You can delay it until tomorrow, the next week, or the next month, and at this rate, you'll never get things done. So your goal must have an end date. So remember, tip number one is to set SMART goals. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. So for example, a goal you could make is registering for a challenging test, a test that's a little bit beyond your current level. I hate failing, so if I register for a challenging test, I'm motivated to study because I don't want to fail. This is a good example of a SMART goal because tests are specific. There are tons of different tests focused on speaking, grammar, and comprehension. Pick a test that can measure the specific area in which you'd like to grow. Measurable. Tests are measurable. Every test measures your performance to some degree. Whether it's a total count of right and wrong answers or a simple pass or fail, every test measures your performance. Tests are achievable. There's an important detail to remember here though. Find a test that is achievable for you. If you're a beginner, then the most advanced test is probably not right for you. Find one that's meant for beginners. Then after that one, work your way up to more advanced tests in the future. Tests are relevant. Most, if not all, language tests are designed to ensure that you're capable of performing to a set standard in your target language. Lower level tests are designed to ensure that you can handle the most essential aspects of your target language. But there are tests for all levels, including higher education entry exams that could be difficult, even for native speakers. Pick the one that's right for you. And finally, tests are timely. If your test is completed in a physical location, then this one is obvious. You have to be at that spot at the set time, ready to take the test. There's no wiggle room. But even online tests will most likely have a deadline for you to complete them. The second tip to help you stop procrastinating and to keep your motivation up is to create a diary or social media account that you can update every day. This may seem simple or even unrelated to language learning, but by creating a diary in your target language, you have the chance to actually create in the language itself. Creating a diary is also a great way to practice writing in your target language. Another method is to create a social media account, which gives you the chance to connect with other people who are working toward the same goals as you. Maybe they can even give you feedback on your writing. If you're following people online who regularly share good resources, those can be really helpful for you too. It lets you find new tools that can encourage and motivate you, especially if they relate to some of your other interests, such as music or books in other languages. This is a really good way to take a few minutes every day to work towards your goal, without it even seeming like work. The third tip is to focus on understanding a specific TV show or movie. Try to watch a movie in your target language without any subtitles or try to understand your favorite TV show that's in your target language. If you don't already have a goal like this, it can be a fun way to practice. If your friends often talk about a particular TV show, it could be a good way to study and a fun way to keep your motivation up together. Plus, TV shows and movies often use the language in a way that's vastly different from the conversations provided in traditional textbooks. So you often get to hear different vocabulary choices. It's a very powerful way to learn a language and end up sounding more like a native speaker. Tip number four is to enroll in a regular language course. Register for something you have to go to or you have to participate in regularly, meaning every week or two times a week or maybe even every day. The point of this is it's something that gives you a pattern to follow. Forming a study habit will help you progress very quickly. It will make it easier for you to achieve your language learning goals. Once you form the habit, you won't even have to think about starting each time. It'll just be natural. Have something that you must take responsibility for. You'll be more motivated to continue if there are others, especially classmates or a teacher, watching you progress. Look for resources inside your community. And if there are no opportunities there, look for things digitally. You can find many of our videos on YouTube, on Facebook, and of course, our entire video and audio lesson library on our website. The lessons on our website also come with assignment courses, so you can test your knowledge. The last tip is to make your goal public. Share your goal. Tell people about your goal. 
For example, if you want to give a business presentation in your target language this year, then tell your colleagues or your boss about it. Some people may find what you're doing interesting, and they can support you. This kind of pressure can help push people forward who have trouble motivating themselves alone. By telling others about your goal, you'll feel more accountable. Because you told somebody that you were planning on doing something, there's an underlying sense of guilt if you don't accomplish the task. You may feel that you have failed your peers in some way, even if there's no direct pressure from them. Using this technique, you can push yourself into moving forward toward your goal, especially at times when you feel the least motivated. And that brings us to the end of our five tips to stop wasting time and start learning a language. We've talked a lot about how to set goals for yourself and think about new challenges. First, I told you about creating SMART goals. Remember, SMART goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. Registering for a test is a great example of a SMART goal. Next, we talked about keeping a diary or social media account in your target language. Start doing it right now, even if you're still a beginner. Then, I suggested that you focus on understanding a specific TV show or movie. Pick something in your target language that you really love, because you may need to watch it over and over again until it all makes sense to you. And next, we talked about enrolling in a regular language course. This will give you something concrete that you must take responsibility for. Finally, make your goal public. Tell someone about your learning goals to keep you accountable for them. You're much less likely to abandon your studies if you have friends asking you about your progress. I hope that these are useful tips that you can use to reach your language learning goals. And before we go, let me remind you to download tons of free PDF lessons to learn the language the fast, fun, and easy way. Just click the link in the description. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and share it with anyone who may find it useful. Do you have any good tips that you've used to help you reach your goals? Share them in the comments. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time. Want to finally learn Hungarian the fast, fun, and easy way? In this video, I'll show you the top 10 ways to get started. So let's begin. Number one, take your very first lesson. Access any audio or video lesson on hungarianpod101.com and just press the play button to get started. Don't have an account? Don't worry. Just go to the sign up page to create an account. It takes less than 30 seconds and it's free. We have thousands of audio and video lessons covering a variety of topics like grammar, pronunciation, listening, and reading. Just click on the play button on any lesson and start learning. Number two, read along with the lesson. You can read along with the lesson notes or lesson transcript. These come with every lesson. The lesson notes provide you with the dialogue for the scene taught in the lesson, along with translations, a more in-depth explanation of the grammar and culture, and even vocab and sample sentences. The lesson transcript is the full word-for-word -word transcript of everything you hear in the lesson. And the dialogue study tool provides you with the audio for the lesson dialogue, along with the translations. Number three, shadowing. Shadowing is a tested learning technique where you repeat what you hear. This is a great way to start speaking in minutes and practice speaking in general. If you're listening along with the lesson audio or dialogue, be sure to shadow along the way. Number four, use the dialogue study tool to master the conversation. Here, you get the line-by-line -line breakdown of the conversation demonstrated in the lesson. Listen and repeat until you've mastered each line. Do this until you've mastered the entire conversation. Number five, Use the voice recorder to perfect your pronunciation and speaking. In the dialogue study tool, you'll find a microphone icon next to each line. Click on it to record your voice. Then, compare it with the native speakers. Listen and adjust your pronunciation until you match that of the native speaker. Number six, review vocab with the lesson vocabulary list. Vocabulary words are the building blocks of language. You can save vocab words taught in each lesson by clicking on Add to Word Bank. Want to drill the words with smart flashcards instead? Just click on Add to Flashcard Deck to do so. Number seven, listen to the review track. If you've studied an audio lesson before, just listen to the review track so that you don't have to listen through the entire lesson again. This is a great way to reinforce the material that you've learned and it's great to have on the go. Just access any audio lesson and click on the download icon. Then click review to download the review track. Number eight, 
review with quizzes after the lesson. Once you're confident enough with the material taught in the lesson, be sure to take the quiz to test your newfound knowledge. Take the review questions and answer true or false for each one. Or take the writing questions and input your answer. Remember to check the answers by clicking on the Check Answers button. Number nine, participate and leave a comment. The best way to master what you've learned is to use it. Join the community of learners by leaving a comment below at the end of every lesson. Our dedicated teachers will check your responses to correct you on any mistakes or provide you with helpful study tips and advice. And finally, number 10, move on to the next lesson. Done with a lesson? Mark the lesson as complete. You can see your overall learning progress on your dashboard. If you particularly enjoyed the lesson, mark the lesson as favorite so that you can come back to it later at any time. Click on the forward arrow to move on to the next lesson and continue learning. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn Hungarian, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. Remember, you can sign up to HungarianPod101.com by clicking on the link in the description. Sign up takes less than 30 seconds, and it's free. I'll see you next time. Bye! Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.